One day you're just one of among 10,000, okay, 8,000 anonymous rock bands logging it out for record. The next day you wake up and you're on tour with Motley Crue and they're talking about passing the heavy metal crown of thorns on to you. Mrs. Ozzy Osbourne passed it on to them. Must have been one hell of a night, right? Well, joining me today is Chad Cherry, lead singer for a rising metal band called The Last Vegas. They won a national competition called the Guitar Center Onstage Contest that attracted 8,000 entries and concluded with them being picked by the guys and the crew for a contract with their record label and a spot opening for them on tour, a tour that is happening right now. And as you'll hear in a few minutes when I play their first single, I'm Bad, they're pretty damn good. It's one of those crazy stories that could only happen in America. Chad, welcome to Mr. Media. Hello, Mr. Media. How, how, how are, you, are you going? Good. Welcome, uh, welcome to the show. It's good. It's good to be on the show. I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to rock out here. I, uh, I'm having a great time on tour. It is full on rock star. <laughs> Life has changed a bit, huh? Life has changed. Uh, you could say a little bit. I guess you could say that. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of riding around in in a in the Econo line, I have a tour bus now. So only in America. No longer living in a van down by the river, huh? No, no, that's next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chad, take me uh, take me back before the competition, before all this stuff happened, and tell me. Tell me what life was like in the Las Vegas before November. Uh, well, take like five guys that all have the same dream, five guys that are all on the same page, and five guys that love rock and roll music. We got together, and we were immediately just all on the same page, and we knew right from the bat that we want to be the band to take over the world. We want to bring back rock and roll music. We want to be the rock and roll stars for the new kids, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we just started recording and writing songs on our style of music and what we want to do, exactly what we want to do and what we like, and we just started putting it out there and started traveling. We we toured, uh, I guess, for like four years, made a lot of like grassroots connections with a lot of people, and made a ton of friends and got a chance to see see the world and see all of Europe and I mean it's it's been a real trip and now now we kind of get a chance to do it on just a little bit bigger level and on a bigger scale and, you know we get to show show the world kind of what we're made out of here well we talk a lot about overnight sensations but that's not you guys I mean you're yeah you people heard about you suddenly overnight but I mean the band's been together for a few years you've recorded before right yeah I mean well, we we had just started the band. We were already in the studio, and we were on a little indie label at the time, and we started putting out vinyl records and touring Europe. And um, you, we did Europe a lot, did a lot in Spain, and we, we traveled all around the uh, the U.S. just uh, nonstop. And the t times that we were actually did, like, have a break, we were back in the studio putting out more music. And, it, yeah, you know, it's... it's it teaches you a lesson. It, it just really shows you what you're made out of, you know, like I was saying. And, yeah, we, we've been putting it out there for, I guess, almost four years now. And, uh, yeah, it's it's wonderful. I mean, these guys are total rock and rollers, man. They're, like, the best friends ever. It's great to be on the road with them. It's great to be playing with, like, a band that influenced the hell out of us as we were kids, too, you know? Now, how... How important uh, was it, Chad, that you guys were, were creating uh, original music that you could record as opposed to just being a, another band that was playing nothing but covers? How, you know, talk a little well, about that. There's just so much cookie cutter stuff out there. There's so many candy coated, like rock and roll, not even rock and roll songs. I don't even know. <clears throat> there's just a, an onslaught of really shitty music that's been going on for for a long time and we were kind of just like the dudes that want to put a, a stop to it and put music back to where it belongs in the gutter <laughs> we, we, we grew up on like the, the, the greatest you know I mean we grew up, grew up on classic rock like The Doors and Aerosmith I mean we're Metallica just I mean you name the greats and we, we, were, we, we still
still listen to that stuff. I mean, I'm originally from Michigan, so I mean, you know, I was just a huge like Stooges fan, and I mean that that's kind of like what shaped us into what kind of band we are. I mean, we're complete underdogs and we're misfits, you know. <laughs> and on t- and on top of that, we want we want to let everybody know <laughs> that it's okay. <laughs> 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 the uh, the underdogs and the misfits uh, can have their day, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. They 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 always should anyway. They they usually do. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, who heard about the contest? How did how did how did you guys come to get take a chance on this contest? That's uh, another animal that um, I guess my guitar player Johnny Water he he submitted us into this, and I had I didn't even know until. Uh, He's like, all right, dude, come on, pack your bags. We got to go to L.A. I'm like, oh, we're going to L.A. He's like, yeah, we uh, want a contest, or we got a, a contest to, to win. I'm like, oh, that was the first I heard of it. So, I mean, it was kind of a new deal, and I mean, I don't think any of us like really kind of like put a whole lot into into it, just thinking it was, you know, just something that would be fun to do. And then we, you know, out of like 8,000 bands, we came out on number one. Pretty cool. Now I think I think you're you're jumping a few steps there, right? I mean, you submit he submitted the tape. Then what did you hear? Did 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 they go through the did they go through the tapes and then say, "Okay, we we've cut it down to what, this number?" What it was is they 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 went through all of the the CDs or the tapes or whatever kids are sending in, you know. <laughs> and uh they they liked us and there were 30 bands that had to audition at uh Guitar Center in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And we got picked into 30 bands, and we, we, we did our thing, and we were super cocky, and, you know, come to, come to find out, we, we got the call that we didn't really, you know, win it. So we're like, oh, well, you know, I kind of took the wind out of our sails. <laughs> and then we were, in, uh, we were in Austin, Texas, and it was on Halloween, and it, <laughs> my guitar player, John, said that we were back in on the contest, and I thought he was just joking, like a Halloween prank or something, but we ended up going back to to LA and we played with six other bands after they whittled it down after the 30 there was uh, six out of the, the 8,000 and we we were the first band to go out to play in the just famous Whiskey A Go-Go you know a great great club of course and we were the first of the six bands so we went out there like a fireball and set the bar too high for anyone to get over and we we got accepted to rock out with one of the greatest bands ever. It must, have been, it must have been a little intimidating, though, to have to go first, not knowing what the other five were going to do, and that you had to put everything out there oh, <laughs> right yeah. out front. Yeah. Well, you know, if there was going to be a band that would do that, it's definitely the Las Vegas. <laughs> we, uh, we, we kind of uh, always expect... Always expect the kind of uh, the the roughest of the road, you know, and it, that's the road that we'll go down. We we like the challenge. <laughs> We're up for it. <laughs> so you guys don't leave anything backstage, I guess, is what you're telling me. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, uh, I want to give a chance if anyone wants to call in and uh, talk to Chad Cherry. Give us a call. Uh, Chad, of course, is the lead singer of the band The Last Vegas. Uh, give us a call, 1646-595-3135. You can make that call as long as you're listening live. If you're listening on a replay or an archive download or you're listening in your car, don't call. We've already moved on, okay? Chad's, chas- Chad's chasing, uh, you know, whatever, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just hanging around at home envying his freedom. So... <laughs> um, Tell us about that last performance we were just talking about. You went on first. Uh, now, this is this time, the guys from crew are there, right? They're watching you. They're probably in the fr- first row. Yeah. Yeah, they were actually, um, they were upstairs, and, uh, you know, we, we saw them, and it was really exciting. You know, when they, when they came into the building, everyone was really hyped. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty cool because we, we, we won the thing, and, they came up on stage and we we met them actually on stage at the Whiskey A Go Go, mm. and they're just so cool. They're such nice guys. I mean, it's 
it's perfect because, you know, Nikki is, he's understands and he gets it because Nikki is all about the music. And that's the kind of band that we are. I mean, we're all, we're in it for the music. You know, we, we want to keep rock and roll alive. And so does Nikki. And I think he saw it in us that we were, we were the real deal. And we were just not really into like win the money or do anything. I mean, what we want to do is we want to put out records and we want to write music and we want to play music in front of a live audience. I mean, I don't, I don't know if like people that don't really know all of our band just yet. We are, we are a total live band. I mean, the the records sound great, but the live shows is just where it all kind of comes together, and that's where we make most of our connection with our audience. Of course, you know, it's through the live shows, and it, it just it's dangerous. And I think I think people want that. I think people need it. It's entertainment, and that's what we're here for. We're 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 here to. Uh, have a good time all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys, uh, and we talked about you recorded before, and uh, people can actually find, I believe, some of your older stuff, uh, certainly on Amazon.com. You can, you can uh, 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 buy a download there of some of the older material. But how different was, uh, was it going into the studio with Nikki Six behind the boards compared to what you've done in the past? Uh, most of the records uh, that we had put out, we had done ourselves. We had, uh, we were getting ready to actually record uh, a record with um, a really good friend and producer, um, Roy Z. You might be familiar with um, him doing the Sebastian Bach record, and mm. he does Bruce Dickinson and uh, Judas Priest stuff. Works with Dio, just a super great guy. So we were working with him in the studio, and you know we were just kind of like getting getting fired up to you know see it, see how far we can take this, and you know maybe possibly get on a, a, a bigger label with, that could support us and help us out and put us up, put our name out there. So we were kind of in the midst of doing that. And then, you know, this thing happened. And then I, I get a chance to work with, with Nikki, who is, I mean, I can't say this enough, the man is a genius when it comes to music. And I was working with Nikki Six, DJ Ashba, who is the guitar player in Nikki's other band, 6 a.m., great great guitar player just knows how to get tones and uh, i was also working with marty Fredrickson, who just the name alone is i mean marty has worked with mick jagger uh aerosmith metallica i mean you you name it buck cherry he's ozzy i mean working with someone that uh, works with you know the best of the best I mean, it's just like a great learning experience, man. I mean, I've learned so, so much about everything, and I, I just feel like as a band, we I've gotten so much better just by hanging out with these guys and being around their vibe and just figuring out how the real pros do it, you know. I mean, that's one of the things that they they wanted us to take with, with us in this experience, you know. It's like mm-hmm. we learn from the best and... So, so we, <laughs> so we don't have to go back. You know, that's what they want us to do. I mean, it's just really, really phenomenal to be working with these guys, man. It's like a dream come true. Hmm. Now I'm going to play on bad in just a minute, but tell me a little about the song. Who wrote it? Uh, you know, is there anything? Is there any story behind it? Anything we should know about? Yeah, on bad is a, a seed of a song that the Las Vegas had. Then we brought it into the studio and rearranged some of it with Nikki and rewrote some of the lyrics. Uh, so I was sitting around and we were Nikki and I were just kind of hammering out some lyrics and like what would sound good with this and that. So it was a seed of a song that we had and we we turned it into something um, is equally as evil as what we had before, but I think it's a little bit more catchier and we got better hooks in it now and. I think it's a little bit more, more uh, I guess, uh, easier to digest than the way that we originally had it. But yeah, it was uh, a seed of a song that we we turned into uh, <laughs> I don't know, something evil. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I like uh, I like this song a lot. It it does have it's got some great hooks. It's uh, there's a great line in it. Um, uh, there's what is it? There's a little bit of me and every bit of you. Is that the, is that oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's it. 
That's great. I mean, it's just, you know, and I'm going to play this in a second. And, and I think people, when they hear this, when we talk about you, uh, and the, and the, we talk about the Las Vegas in the context of um, uh, uh, Motley Crue, people go, yeah, well, they want a contest. Yeah, right. What are you talking about? But listen to this song. and te- I mean, please call us uh, after you hear this. Tell us what you think. It's one six four six five nine five three one three five. You know, there's just a power. <laughs> excuse me. There's a power and a confidence uh, in the playing and the vocal there that you just. That's what. That's the difference between. You know, somebody says that these guys are an overnight sensation. You're not. I mean, you you've obviously got the road experience. There's something that you can hear there that you just don't hear in somebody you, you find off the street. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what. Uh, you know, you listen to like a record. And, you know, back in the day, there there wasn't, like, any kind of, like, Pro Tools or anything to, like, put put that put that soul into it, you know? I mean, you can you can fart around with, like, the best technology ever, which, I mean, I'm not against it. I mean, of course I use it, you know? I definitely keep up with the times. But, I mean, if you don't have the experience and the, the soul and the, the real energy... I mean, no one's going to buy it. No one's going to come across as it being, like, anything other than something that's fake, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I want to let everybody know that they can, uh, they can purchase uh, I'm Bad on uh, iTunes and uh, um, uh, Amazon and, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere that you normally would get music, you can go and get that song now. It's, and I have to tell you, for me, uh, it was one of those. It's one of those times where it's the first time I've actually been introduced to a song online, and the first time I heard it was going to uh, I think your MySpace page, which is yeah. uh, MySpace MySpace dot com slash the lost. I'm sorry, the Las Vegas. Yep. And uh, I thought, you know, that song belongs in my collection. That should be in my my uh, my uh, regular uh, uh, play. Uh, that's, in iTunes. that's great, man. I mean. It's a, like I said, we're we're a new band and we've been coming on, just put, we've just been putting it out there, you know. And it's pretty cool not having a record out yet and just having that song just starting to pop, you know, and having the crowd just really really dig what we're doing. And I mean, the reaction to everybody is just like fantastic. So, I mean, I I can't wait. The record comes out in um, spring, probably like late April. And I mean, once like people get used to like our music being out there, then they're going to know us a little bit better. And I think, I think that's when we're going to truly, truly make like a lot of our, our real, real fans. Now where, tell us where, where you're stand. Uh, you guys have been in the studio, I think. Are you finishing a full disc or, you know, what are you working on? We just got done doing a full length album for 7-Eleven um, music. Uh, 10th street is our, uh, as our boys, and it's the same label that Nikki's. Well, actually, uh, 6 a.m. is on it. Uh, Buck Cherry, Papa Roach, Blondie, Motley Crue, oh, the Axes. A lot of like John and Pool, A lot of really good bands. Um, and it's it's coming out on. Uh, I guess yeah, yeah. April it, it's gonna drop. And I mean, it, yeah, it's our first major label record. We we put out a couple handful of indies and toured on that ourselves but this is good because what we're getting now is like we're going to be getting a lot of uh we've been getting a lot of radio play and we've been jumping in bed with all these like fantastic people at the radio stations which is just uh, so everyone's been so supportive in it you know and i think it's a good time for us because i think people want rock and roll music i think it's Mm. time for it to come back you know and to me it's never gone anywhere but you know i'm still listening to the stooges so (laughs) <laughs> um, tell me about this voice of yours I mean uh, you know you hear it and it's like it, it you know it, it could easily be on the radio certainly uh, so you can see that ahead but when did you realize that you could do that that you could wail like that well I guess it starts back um, with my club days in, in Michigan actually I uh, was in a I was in a uh, little uh, glam band back in the day with actually the guy who's playing bass in my band now is uh, was playing the drums and you know we kind of just did it as a as something to do for like a kind of a joke you know we wanted to like dress up and be com- completely crazy you know and I certainly did not know what I was doing I, I just knew that I wanted to have a good time and maybe get some free beer and score some 
some really hot girls, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then people started taking it serious, you know? After, like, there would be a handful of people at the show, and then the next show, it would be sold out. I'm like, wow, this is not really a joke anymore, you know? So from there, I just turned it into a circus, turned it into a fun house. It's, uh, I, it's I just kept, I, I just kept singing, and I didn't, like... I've been working with a lot of really, really talented people, and that kind of that stuff just rubbed off on me, you know. And that's kind of how, like, my education. I've never had any vocal lessons or anything like that, but I've I've hung out with some of the greatest musicians ever, you know. And when you when you're hanging out with such a such a I don't know, such a talented bunch of people, you know, that stuff kind of rubs off on you. I know, I know, I'm like being a little harsh on myself i know i I do know (laughs) a little bit but i guess you gotta understand you know when you're hanging out with really really talented people it's gonna rub off on you you know not to say that i (laughs) no never mind (laughs) i want to i want to ask you speaking of hanging out i want to ask you about the crew i uh and i have to tell you a little story first uh more than 20 years ago i was in a peaches records and tape store in clearwater florida Clearwater, Florida, covering an in-store signing that the crew did. Uh, I was there for the St. Petersburg Times as a reporter, and it was about the craziest scene I've ever seen during daylight hours. Uh, Ultimately, the band had to leave early because it was so crazy, and it set off a a near riot of disappointed fans. And so what I'm kind of wondering is, are are they still attracting that kind of scene, and and how – you know, what do you learn from that? What do you, what have you seen being on the road with these guys? Oh, my God. All i got to say is, like, do they still attract the scene? Hell, yes, they do. I mean, this is one of the biggest bands in the world, and every one of their... I watch them every night, and every one of their songs is just massive. Everybody knows their music. And if you don't, you've been hiding under a rock or are lying to yourself because they're a great band, and they are... Uh, they're a, a timeless... They they write timeless music. You know what I mean? Like, you, you will hear Girls, Girls, Girls forever. Your children will hear it. Their children will hear it. That song is is going to be around forever. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's the connection with with the world. People love it. You know? I mean, I love it. I can watch it every every day. I mean, I am watching it every day. <laughs> you know? But they're just massive. And so, so Chad, for everybody who's ever dreamed of being on tour with Motley Crue and having a you know being a fly on the wall even. Tell us something that we, we would see that would just kind of amaze you, amaze you of. Um, well, <laughs> set aside from the crazy partying and phenomenal <laughs> tail that runs around, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I got to give it out to, to, to Mick Mars, actually, because he is a rock and roll god. Uh, I, gotta, I just got to give... Everyone, let everybody know that Mick Mars is one of the hottest guitar players ever and one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in my entire life. I just, I, that's one thing that I want to know. <laughs> let what? everybody know anyway. <laughs> but what makes him that? I mean, how, why, why do you say that? Why do you, uh, you know, the guys, why do you, why do you single him out? What is it about him? What is it that you've seen or heard or done or? Because Mick is just, Evil badass. <laughs> I, I <laughs> like, like I was saying, you know, I, I think Mick is completely like insane and out of his mind, a rock star, and and that's that's the kind of shit that makes people go bananas. I mean, when he gets out there and does his guitar stuff, it's just twisted, man. And <laughs> I feel I feel bad for anyone that doesn't show up to the shows to get a chance to see it because he is always been so good and set aside from like listening to Nikki like just go off on the audience and I mean it's just a great experience I mean if you like rock and roll music this is definitely the house that you want to be <laughs> now um, you guys are touring are you playing tonight yeah we're actually in Grand Rapids Michigan and, uh, we're going to- oh that's weird I was actually there two weeks ago that's funny small you were, world you were there yeah yeah. But, well, who, you, who did you see? Oh, I wasn't there for a concert. Believe it or not, I was there. 
this is so weird. I was actually there covering a religious conference for a magazine. But oh, really? nonetheless, Grand, Grand Rapids in February, boy, that's some cold, cold, cold town. Yeah, I mean, Halen, I got really lucky this year, and uh, fortunately for me, we were recording the record throughout the whole wintertime, so I got to miss all the really lousy weather. <laughs> too, too bad for me. <laughs> now, how many more dates do you have with the crew? And, and uh, Hinder is on this tour, right? And uh, yep. theory, theory of a Dead Man, is that the band? Yep. Hinder, uh, it's it's Las Vegas, Theory of a Dead Man, Hinder, and then Motley Crue. And the, the whole thing gets wrapped up, starts at around 6.30, gets wrapped up at around 11. Wow. And, uh, yeah, everyone's just like, it's a great show. I mean, the, the, the fans are just phenomenal. You know, everyone's just kicking ass. Hmm. How many more dates do you have? We have, uh, there's 35 shows all together. How many how many more dates do we have? Oh, you're not. Wait a second. <laughs> um, I'm going to say probably about um, like 20, 25 more, I guess. Hmm. Close to it. Has, have you, has you, uh, I, I don't have a schedule in front of me. Have you played Vegas already or is that still coming up? Oh, yeah, we played Vegas. We did two nights with just the last Vegas and Motley Crue. And I mean that that in itself is a life changing experience. I don't I didn't you had to like pull pull me out of the Hard Rock Cafe to get me to leave. I mean it was <laughs> phenomenal, just a great time. And there were so so many people that were so into the rock. Man, it was it was badass. Two nights we played the joint, and it was the last two shows that were going to be there until they. Uh, the, the day after we left, they uh, tore the whole place down to reopen a different one. So it was wow. kind of a monumental deal. And, you know, I, I, save, I save that question for near the end because I have to ask you, tell me about the name of the band, The Last Vegas. What, where does the that last, come from? The Last Vegas. Well, The Last Vegas <laughs> is the last true original sin in its flesh. We are the last party that you can ever go to, so you better show up or you're going to miss out <clears throat> because the Las Vegas is the climax. <laughs> Got it. So it must have been – had you guys played Vegas before? That was actually our first time playing Vegas. Ah. Did, they, we, did uh, they appreciate the irony? Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Everyone was really, really into us. And um, uh, we just made, like, a lot of new fans, a lot of new friends. And, just, I mean, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big people fan, you know. I like to, I like to go out after the show and, and talk to everybody and just see, see where everybody's at, you know. And the crowd response is just overwhelmingly amazing. I mean, it's, it's really cool. It's better than I expected it to be. <laughs> well... Well, I, I want to tell everybody that you can uh, download uh, the Las Vegas' first single, I'm Bad, on uh, iTunes and Amazon.com. And uh, in the spring, watch for their uh, complete album, which I'm sure will be available in similar places. And uh, you can also follow their adventures online uh, at either www.thelastvegas.com. That's all solid, thelastvegas.com. Or catch them on MySpace. Sign up to be their friend. Uh, www.myspace.com slash the last Vegas and uh, Chad man congratulations uh, it sounds like you're having a blast and you're really living the life yeah it, it is truly a blast and um, I mean it, it's really cool for me because I love doing these interviews and stuff I mean it's just like it's good to, for me because like, like I said you know I'm a, it, it, I'm a I'm a huge fan of music too you know so I mean I can relate to wanting to, like, go to concerts and, and buying records. I mean, I, I still buy, like, vinyl records and stuff. I mean, I'm just a huge fan of music, so it, it's important to me, you know, to to figure out, like, what, like, fans really are thinking and, and what what they like, and I, I, I just want to learn from everybody, you know. That's mm -hmm. what life should be about a little bit, you know. Well, we're going to, uh, at the end of the show, in just a minute, I'm going to uh, spin on bad one more time for those of who joined us late. And uh, But I want to say uh, thank you so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. It was a, a lot of fun. And, uh, wish oh, you guys thanks, a lot Bob. Of luck. 
Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, man, it is a great experience, and I, this is a great show, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And good luck. Have a good time tonight. Thanks, man. I will talk to you soon. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, folks, for uh, more great musician and related uh, interviews, you can surf over to our main website, uh, www.mrmedia.com. That's mrmedia.com, where you can listen to my Lost Tape conversations with John Denver, Gene Simmons, uh, Billy Powell of Leonard Skinner, and uh, Bo Diddley, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Podcast Pickle, Vox, Folio, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, or Odeo. And you can now subscribe to the blog feed for Mr. Media on the Amazon Kindle Reader. Just go to Amazon.com, search Mr. Media, you'll find us. You can also subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I always appreciate when you give up a little bit of your day to spend it with us.